Hello, welcome to Northwest Magic. My name is Howie. I'm Levi. And today we're going to be telling you guys about our top 10 favorite cards in the 99 from Bloomboro and the Commander set. Also Bloomboro. You know, I got to say, I love this set, Howie. I was very excited for it. I just really love the art and the style um, that everything is. You know, it wasn't like a crazy high power set. It was no Lord of the Rings but there are some really good things to come out of this uh, this set. I so think it's a great set. It's yeah, still I fantastic. Love narrowing, it. narrowing this down to ten. Honestly, <laughs> there's just a lot of playable but, stuff here. You know, like it's just so so playable. There is. So I want to get into it. I'm going to start off with number ten in no particular order, but number ten. <laughs> <laughs> this is a. The weird one. It's called Festival of Embers. It's four and a red for an enchantment. During your turn, you may cast instant and sorcery spells from your graveyard by paying one life in addition to their other costs. If a card or token would be put into your graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. And then for one and a red, you can sacrifice it. So it's kind of like, I was just telling you this, Levi, it's kind of like a fix. Underworld Breach, where it, it is. doesn't do your permanence. And you already have to have a graveyard for it to work. Which I guess you kind of do with Underworld Breach because you only get it for the turn anyway, typically. But it's kind of neat and I feel like you could do some weird stuff. It's kind of like a build your own Mizzix's Mastery kind of, but you still have to pay for everything. I don't know. It's just <laughs> kind of fair. And sometimes I like myself some fair magic. And I bet you this won't cost any money at all. <laughs> Yeah, there's because there are kind of some better alternatives than this one. This one's probably going to be your uh, your cheaper variant to those cards, such as Underworld Breach or Mizzix's Mastery. I think it's great. And this card is absolutely a just you wait until I untap. But <laughs> it's cool. It's it really truly cool. is. It truly and is. I wanted, to have, I wanted to have a weird pick on here. It's, it's kind of a weird one, but I also love it. Um. One that had really caught my eye kind of before this is I just really wanted to talk about this. This land is Three Tree City. Um, when it enters, <laughs> yeah, choose a creature type, tap, add, add a colorless, comes in untapped. That's what's awesome. And then for two in a tap, choose a color, add an amount of mana of that color equal to the number of creatures you control the chosen type. Guys, Insane. it's like a guy's cradle. Come on. You know, if more you don't like want to spend Nixos, right? It's a little more of a Nixos, yeah. If you don't want to spend as much money as as a guy's cradle costs in real life, Three Tree City is is a really nice alternative, and it still is like you're still going to play this, and people are still going to be like, "Wow, that's busted. That's stupid. Even that is unfair." Not, <laughs> not necessarily a tribal deck, but if you you need three. Three creatures to break even and four to go mana positive, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's good. You're that's going good. to see this in your Chatterfang decks. You're yeah. going to see this in Kaikar. You're going to yeah. see this. I have Pia, which isn't necessarily a tribal deck, but it makes a fair amount of Thopters. <laughs> yeah. You you're, just, you're going to see this a lot, guys. So very uh, beautiful card. Yeah, I want a, I want a few of them. And... This might be the most expensive card in the set, though, besides special art treatments, I bet. Oh, yeah, I'm not it positive absolutely on is. that, but I bet you it is. I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. Like, base level, it's pretty sure it is. Yeah. It was crazy, considering it's just a rare, but the ubiquity of it is very... It's there, and people are going <laughs> to want it in, in troves. Okay. So I'm going to talk about one that I'm kind of excited for. You like that? <laughs> okay. We need to get anyway. A real quick for that. <laughs> Polywog Prodigy is our number eight pick, I believe. In no particular order. One in a blue for a creature frog withered. One three with evolve. Oh, this is in the commander set. I thought this was in the main set. It has evolved. So whenever a creature enters, if that creature has greater power or toughness than this creature, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature and then it says whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell with mana value less than polywog prodigy's power draw a card what do you think levi 
What kind of vibes does this give you? I'm saying Ledger Shredder vibes, baby. I'm saying Fairy Mastermind. Fairy Mastermind vibes. This can go in a lot of decks with blue, I think. Maybe this has, mm. I think, a lower floor than those, but a much higher ceiling because I guess they can all draw you four cards a turn, but this can draw you infinite cards a turn. You know what I'm saying? With the right the right plus one counters on it. Or yeah, I mean... Like, like prowess or it requires a little bit more work but yeah how you basically said the floor is lower but the ceiling's higher it's pretty easy card draw like it truly is the format is getting lower mana curve so i think that if you get this to three power it's going to start triggering a lot if you get to four it's going to trigger all the time yeah people are always casting one two three i mean yeah yeah and i mean you play this on turn two and your commanders you know the next turn after that three or four mana whatever like hope your commander has more than one power probably (laughs) most likely let's hope toughness then that's a good start right there great yeah little little just a cool frog you know he's a cool frog you want to know who else is cool? A, a lizard. Lizards are pretty cool. Agate instigator. One in a red. Creature. Lizard. Rogue. Not a lizard wizard. Offspring. One in a red. Whenever another creature you control enters, this creature does one damage to each opponent. Guess what also costs four mana? Perforos. This is as this close does to this... as we've ever gotten. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Same mana costs, except for an extra red. Not yeah. indestructible. It's always a creature, but it's two bodies. So in a way, it's easier to get rid of, but harder to get rid of at the same time. It's very adjacent, which is good. Yeah, I think it's really useful for a token strat. I mean, like, Perforos is still great, don't get me wrong. Uh, but Agadon Segator can just add more fuel to the fire, quite literally. Yeah. <laughs> and He should have been a gator, though. The the token will trigger, an alligator. He should have been an token alligator. Will trigger the original <laughs> right away. So it's just one damage right off the bat. Not Look much. at that! Isn't that cool? A good start. Also, cool. if you have any sort of token synergies, whether it's populate or like, if you would make a token, make more of them with like anointed procession or whatever the green ones are called. I feel like I always play the white one. <laughs> yeah. What are the green ones called? Parallel lives. Parallel doubling. lives. Doubling season. Chatterfang. Chatterfang. It, <laughs> it makes a squirrel on top Whatever. of your tokens. Why but I mean, it's still it, it's it's still worse with the Agate Instigator. Still worse with the Agate Instigator. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what he has like over that. Perforos, right? Is like his his ceiling again. Yeah. Um, he can he can and just get more and more. Because you could play him on turn two if you don't. If you him. really... Yeah, no, I agree with that, too. Like, if you really don't want his other half. <laughs> or or not even early. Sometimes you'll draw him late and you'll want a double spell, but you won't have enough for that offspring. So and it's like, well, one damage is all I really need. If Because sometimes you only really need one damage if you're into combo pieces, right? Like, if, he's, if all he's there is just to, for an infinite combo or something, you don't need or to spend like four. Playing, playing a token deck. And you play him, and then you can secure the waste next turn, and you know that you're going to close out the game that way. You don't need to spend the extra mana. You can hold up interaction or something. I like this one. It's called Caretaker's Talent. It's an enchantment class. We got classes this set. I don't think we've had those since Baldur's Gate. It's been a while. Been a while. Two and a white. It's been a while. It starts with... Since... I've it starts with whenever one or more tokens <laughs> you control enter the enter. It just says enter now. <laughs> Draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. This is another copy. We're getting critical mass of welcoming vampire, Benny Brax, Takasia's welcome kind of stuff. And I like that. I like that it triggers once each turn. So if you're being a little degenerate and you're playing Smothering Tithe, then you're probably going to make the treasure every turn <laughs> draw a card every turn mm. uh for white you can level it up just one mana easy when it becomes level two 
create a token that's a copy of a target token you control, which also draws you a card when you do it from the first level of the class. That's pretty good. Self-synergy with itself. Self-synergy with itself, three. all by itself. By itself. And <laughs> for three and a white. Creature tokens you control get plus two, plus two. That's totally reasonable. It is eight mana to get there all the way, but over the course of three turns, and you don't even need to activate that last part until you're ready to swing in, you know, jet mirror at home or whatever. There will be times when you probably will never even use that. Who knows? No, but even even I want to I like that it's the third that. one. Yeah. That's something that's something that's nice. Is like you don't sometimes with the classes, you almost have to like get past the one that you that you don't want <laughs> and and get to the one that you actually want. Yeah. Here it's kind of nice like, you know, the creating a token that's a copy of something of, of a token you control can sometimes be like so much and for one for one white mana if you really think about it if you're in a token strategy is actually kind of insane you only spend one white mana on a token you control maybe that token is is uh maybe another agate instigator the agate instigator token or maybe you're playing <laughs> blue and your name is me and you're playing irenicus's vile duplication that makes a token copy yeah. Every deck, bro. That thing's awesome. Yeah. yeah, so Caretaker's talent is is kind of it's probably going to be a little slept on. Kind of like Northwest Magic I think, is. I think it <laughs> I think it is too. I think this is maybe maybe top two best classes in the set. Yeah. I want to say it's the best, but I'm gonna say top two. <laughs> People are going to see that dumb little rabbit and bat. There's a bat on there too. I didn't even notice. And be like, oh, this is harmless. This is harmless. But then, yeah, the whole set. But then everything is all, all of a sudden plus two plus two, and you got a, you got another freaking agate instigator on the field. Well, I don't, I don't want to be messed with him. Uh, you want to know what's not going to be slept on? You're done talking about caretakers talent, are you? Yeah. Okay. You, you want to know <laughs> what's not getting slept on? Is probably into the flood maw. This is a one right. one blue mana instant spell. You gift the you gift this person a fish, a tapped fish. Tapped. A tapped fish, which is so dumb. Return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. If the gift was promised, instead return target non land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Oh, oh, you like that um fantastic. You like that shieldred of the apocalypse? <laughs> One blue mana. There's a tapped fish. The gift with that. That's just <laughs> I guess crazy. you don't. I guess no. you know. My smothering tithe. You like that smothering tithe? Now nah, get I that mean, out of here. Isn't unsummon just a blue? That's like the thing that nobody plays, but it's a blue mana. Yeah, unsummon just costs blue. So it's unsummon with upside. And the upside is insane because you can return anything if you're returning some sort of token because like a third of every card that exists these days has to do with tokens. <laughs> it kind of does yeah getting more and more token focus but yeah blue blue removal is not what it used to be because people be like oh you don't re you don't remove it you just put it back put it back in your hand well you know what when you have if you're playing commander anyway when you have three other people's turns before yours again Simply having something back in your hand is is a little more harsh than just like in standard sixty card format. I I, I don't know. Yeah, it's also like. And what am I gonna do with this tapped fish, bro? <laughs> it's also just a huge tempo swing against you if this happens to you. Like if you blues you investment play your commander for four or five mana. Yeah, I, I spend one, and you just I basically and you're a turn behind. I wasted your turn. You're a turn behind now. I all I have to all I have to show for it is a tapped blue fish, and I, I, maybe I won't even get it if you're sending my commander back to me. Yeah, yeah that's so yeah, gross. Creature, whatever. That's so good. That's it's so flexible. good. I it's love flexible. flexibility in this game. Yeah, I would put this every card in my deck will be modal without even being like a Riku deck, a modal deck. <laughs> this love is it. this is like. The blue version of Path to Exile or 
whatever. Like this is as close yeah, as it gets. Pass, only hit creatures. Yeah, yeah. Know, like it's, it's still just, yeah, it's so it's good. Great. Like blue is going to run the. If you have blue, this replaces like, like this can replace chaos warp if or whatever. I I know chaos warp is red, but <laughs> like let's yeah. say you have a deck that's like got a bunch of colors in it, and maybe you can cut one of the you know generous gift. Beast within chaos warp to get your mana curve low. You could you could legitimately make an argument to cut one of those for this. Yeah, easy, absolutely. I like like if you want to lower it, I'm gonna put it in most, if not all, of my blue decks. Yeah, this might be one of the best cards in the in the set. I think it's one of the best overall cards. It will probably be ever made. One ever. of the most. I was gonna say one of the most <laughs> played ones from the set. We might see it in CDH too. I think you will. As yeah. long, and maybe another card on this list, but we're not there yet. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's talk about <laughs> Coruscation Mage. It is another offspring card, another red card, two mana, creature, otter wizard, two, two, offspring, two. <laughs> Whenever you cast a non creature spell, this creature deals one damage to each opponent, but if you have non an otter spell. Two, Sorry, I just it's non creature. Did I, just I say non otter? No, I want. I wish you did. <laughs> I just wish you okay. said it. <laughs> no, it's great. It's good. It's fire. It's fantastic. Archer, but it's amazing. It has more relevant creature types. Being a wizard, so uh, harmonic prodigy will help it out. Oh, harmonic prodigy, Veyran. Veyran doesn't even care that it's a wizard, but yeah, awesome. Dude, awesome. I love this card. I love it. And it's, oh yeah, it's I guess it doesn't. I know Firebrand Archer is also non creature, but it's better than like maybe not better, but you know, Gutter Snipe is only like instants and sorceries, and this can get non creatures, which yeah, are a lot. I mean, you, there's playing, a lot of. <laughs> I'm playing like probably thirty non creature spells in every deck, no matter what. Yeah, no matter what. And then if you're a spell slinger burn type deck, like this otter goes in. Yeah. There's really not much to say. This is like this is so good as a combo piece and so good as just long game like freaking you got this otter out and people's life totals are going to start going down faster than my credit score. Uh so oh Another otter. <laughs> is... Don't forget to put the the baby version on screen for all the folks. Out oh, there. I'd love to. Love the the little babies, stuff. little babies. I will. Another otter that I wanted to talk about. I didn't talk about this right. Yeah, Storm Splitter. So he's four mana, but he does have haste. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you create a token that's a copy of Storm Splitter. Exile that token at the beginning of the next instant. Uh, it is pretty darn amazing especially like i could see this going in quite a few decks like um i don't think you're going to be running it but bria does come to mind just 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 you know off the top of my head yeah. Yeah. um because she gives other creatures prowess so you could be chaining off some freaking cantrips here and you... all of the copies you make more copies with haste and then those have prowess on them that you could swing wide for a lot of damage Yep. It'd be hard to keep track of, though, because each one would have, like, a different power and toughness. <laughs> but if you're yeah, playing probably. Storm, you have to you have to be willing to understand that if sort of thing. You know, you, it's, for, it's for people with high IQs, Storm players, yeah. <laughs> if you, in this video, and it's 2024 or later in the, in the timeline of this world... And you are playing Veyran, and you do not have Storm Splitter in your deck. That's wrong, dude. That's, <laughs> that's so wrong. wrong. It, takes, it takes four. Where's my camera? Four instants <laughs> and <laughs> to get eighty one of these guys. Let me break out my four. Here. It only four. takes four. Veyran out, and then if you do it one more time, you have two hundred forty three. You win. Oh my god, this is as as, da as dangerous as Scoot Swarm is. It is 
that's what I said in the short, isn't it? It's Scoot Swarm yeah. wins and sorceries. It's great. And I saw that Bay short. Bayran, <laughs> yeah, you edited it. <laughs> and Bayran also runs Harmonic Prodigy. This is also a wizard. So uh, one, two, three, four. If you cast four spells with Bayran and Harmonic Prodigy, you get 256 of them and you also win. Like, that's just it. They have hastes. Like, what are they going to do? Not not a lot of people are playing instant speed board wipes or or whatever to protect this. I mean, yeah. what, are you, what are you going to do? Storm Fairies splitter with it. any kind of, like, doubler effect, which is pretty easy to do in red, is so terrifying. Like, it's kind of one of those kill on sight type situations, to be, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, like you, you really, if you see that come out, it's like, oh, oh no, they might actually just win this turn. <laughs> yeah, it's a more bursty kind of Scoot Swarm, where if you see Storm Splitter, you probably got to get rid of it. If you see Scoot Swarm, you know, you got to turn. It's You've got to turn, because Scoot Swarm doesn't have haste, fortunately. That's, you know, it's a fair card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Storm Splitter is not fair. <laughs> stay around so unless, unless you're playing oh dude if you are watching this video and it's right now right this second right now and you have what is it the master multiplied you don't have to sack those tokens or exile them right how is that i don't remember i think it's just for you'd have to read it i don't know if exiling works master molt Triggered abilities you control can't cause you to sacrifice or exile creature tokens you Yo. control. So you need to run this in that deck because you just keep it. And uh, I don't know. That's pretty cool. Anyway. Yeah. Master Multiplied I'm is pretty sick with this. i talk about a different card because I want to keep this video moving. Same. Number nine, but actually our number two pick, I believe, if I'm <laughs> keeping track right. In no particular order. Mockingbird X and a blue for a bird bard. One one. It will, never, it will never be a one one. Flying. You may have Mockingbird enter as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, not just yours. With mana value less than or equal to the amount of mana spent to cast Mockingbird, except it is a bird in addition to its other types, and it has flying. It doesn't keep bard. It doesn't. So? It doesn't. It doesn't keep bard. But Dude. It keeps bird. So <laughs> this is your second copy of probably any anything in your entire deck. Granted, you already have to have it on the field, but you can be like dockside, and then with your 12 treasures you just made, you can make 12 more by spending <laughs> two of them. If you... I don't know anything. Esper Sentinel for just a blue. What other good things are there? Welcoming Vampire for three... <laughs> Coruscation Mage or Storm Splitter or anything else we talked about today, copy them. A Gate Instigator, Hollywog Prodigy, anything. Anything. Maybe a frog, Wizard, Bird. Exactly. It's great. It's Put just the sun new, new on Elish thing. Norn Grand Cenobite. And then just watch one of them die. <laughs> But at least you get everything <laughs> minus four, minus four. For, yeah, see, for that, there you go. Methods long, to the madness. Yeah, that is the kind of the only thing is it's not, you know, the legendary rule. But that's honestly completely fine because there's lots of different tokens, like yep. all that fun stuff. So if you have the thing, you get the thing again, which is, uh, tell me again, it's my favorite word in magic. Again. Again, twice, additional. Copy. All that kind of stuff. I just want to do Don't, the same we love thing it. again and again. <laughs> One more. Um, one more. I wanted to talk about Peerless Recycling. One, because it has a pretty cute raccoon. I like him. And two, it's because it's a really good rate for what you're getting out of it. One and a green. Gift a card. Awesome. You give somebody a card. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If the gift was promised and said return two target permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. For two That's mana, pretty, yeah. for two mana? Speed, and it's the, not even green green. It's just one in a green. It's one in a green. The only thing is, it's it's just permanence. It's just permanence. But hey, Don't listen, matter. listen. That's pretty darn good. Yeah, because um, we used to boast really crazily about uh, 
Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness yep. will get anything though, correct? Uh, if, um, yeah. It's not just so. There's she still got that going. My girl, my girl still got that going on for her, but she's three mana. <laughs> for one thing, this raccoon at, at sorcery speed. At sorcery speed. At creature speed. <laughs> creature speed. <laughs> at creature speed. This is instant. So that's insane. And of course, you can blink <laughs> Eternal Witness. You know what I mean? Like, this shit. Cool stuff. But this, I love instance. I love holding up mana. That's all I want to do. It's my <laughs> mana, and I'm keeping it now. <laughs> For my raccoon. In so, the card that you're gifting, it doesn't even matter. You can make some friends along the way. Hey, I'm about to do something. Do you want to be friends? And I'll give you something. And you don't even tell them what you're going to do. And then you just get Elishnorn Grand Cenobite back. From your graveyard, yeah, Alice Noir that, Grand Cino with your own Mockingbird. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, because you decided to keep the Mockingbird version instead, yeah. or, or you can get the Mockingbird back if you made the wrong move and killed. <laughs> yeah, decided killed the to Mockingbird do that. <laughs> or, <God>. or <laughs> they killed both of them, and you get both back. There you go. The possibilities are endless. This is also a great card. I would consider if the lists weren't getting so tight, everything's so yeah. tight. If you're a little I'm more permanent focus, every green deck. I know which green is usually order, but this is such a good staple card. Very yeah, we had a lot of good, good uncommons. How many uncommons did we just talk about? One, two, three, three. That's pretty good. That's really good. good for a top 10? Three uncommons? Yeah. I think is really good. I mean, uncommons aren't like they used to either. These un uncommons are absolutely insane. You should only get like one a set. like a In, like Into the Flood? Or something. Yeah. Well, guys, this was the definitive top 10 uh, Bloomboro, car Bloomboro cards. Bloomboros. Uh Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Check out our Patreon. I would like to shout out Richard Dilks and King Dom, our two patrons. Maybe by the time you edit this video, we'll have three or 12. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's hope for 12. 12 patrons. Yeah. So, check it out. Support yes, us. guys. Get me Thank some you. better lighting, because I know that this ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, thank you, Check guys. Check out our Elder Dragon Hot Wings content. It's yes. pretty cool. We eat hot stuff and we play hot stuff yeah that's kind of like our magnum opus of this channel right now it takes a lot of uh takes a lot of work and we just want to like that's just one our big thing that we'd like to kind of keep going on so what side do you put me when Please, you edit checking it out. when i'm on these videos am i in the bottom right or the bottom right you're in the bottom left when you're looking at the screen there you I'll go perfect right <laughs> That's our Elder Dragon Hot Wings episode two or three. I don't know what episode will be out when this comes out. Check it out. <laughs> Have fun. Peace out. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>